So, um, I guess first of all, tell me, you know, why the community is, you know, kind of up in arms about a family dollar. Well, I think there's a lot of different reasons. Like, you know, the Seminole Heights, you know, the, the immediate Seminole Heights unincorporated area is pretty pretty diverse group of residents. So I think there's a lot of different reasons. Um, most of them that I that I hear seem to be not not so much the opposition of Family Dollar as a company um, in the things that they sell and the customers that they attract because you know they have customers in this neighborhood. You know I, I think there are more Family Dollar customers than people want to admit. Um, and so the, it, I don't think the issues are so much strictly focused at Family Dollar as a company, but more so at in this case the location that they've now chosen and the amount of locations that they have already in the neighborhood um, and also the way they've gone about getting this particular piece of property or, or you know negotiate getting the property and negotiating the lease uh, for the property um, is, is a very underhanded deal um, which is, is something they're they're known for I mean that's like it's a common practice for them it's not nothing illegal but you know, by no means a, a you know a, a straightforward public you know. Now, how was it undermined? What did they What did they do? Well, the property wasn't from this. This is my understanding, having spoken to the property owner um, and you know other long-term tenants of the property, um, and you know even confirmed some of this with the developer. The property wasn't for sale. Um, market assessed market values, you know, somewhere around a quarter of a million dollars, and. Uh, this developer, uh, who historically has Family Dollar in their back pocket, they they search for properties. Um, they search for properties specifically for Family Dollar. There's a Family Dollar opening up on Nebraska in Ebor, um, and I've been to I've been to city council hearings where, you know, the the same thing has happened. Um, you know, they they walked in and offered quietly um, offered the property owner. Know, almost nine hundred thousand dollars for the property. Um, so clearly, it was for sale at that point, and you know the the plan was already in place. Months prior to that, there were you know there was discussion and some some waivers presented to adjacent property owners um, that didn't directly make reference to what the plan was for the property. It just made reference to improvements that they were going to make. You know, so there there are two property owners that feel misled in that in, in, in that particular circumstance, um, but you know, unfortunately, you know, the, the real estate's real estate. You know, that's that. The, there's nothing illegal there, and I don't think, you know, if it weren't a family dollar and there weren't already four, um, I don't think there would be as much opposition to all of what's going on. I think it's this kind of cumulative thing. People. Like, well, there's this and there's this. There's all these things that add up to just kind of a really crappy situation. Um, and you know, personally, my 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 opinion, you know, has has really little to do with with Family Dollar as a company and the way they do business. I mean, you know, they're not historically not a good employer, um, but there are a lot of bad employers. Um, you know, that's something that they they have every you know every chance in the world to change that. You know, every store is another opportunity for them to change that. So I don't really have a huge, you know, opposition to them as an employer. Um, but in this case, you know, they're trading, you know, a handful, you know, over a dozen, it's my understanding, over a dozen, you know, locally owned, and, you know, locally owned or locally employed jobs in the location right now for what will probably end up being about the same number of minimum wage, you know, possibly, you know, out of the area, you know, absentee, you know, employees. Now, um, I mean, your shop has been broken into it more than once, mm -hmm. right? That's correct. Um, is there a fear that having a family dollar in the neighborhood is going to attract people of lower income that might potentially have I don't, a higher propensity to commit crimes like that. I don't. I don't have that concern. Um, you know, I shop at Family Dollar. You know, I don't. I don't necessarily draw a an opinion on the Family Dollar customer. Um, 
you know, I, I, that doesn't really concern me. Um, you know, the the if, if that were if that were an issue, that there would have to be some pretty uh, some pretty hard numbers of you know the demographic that that Family Dollar attracts. And from what I can tell, especially in this neighborhood, it's a pretty it's a pretty big, broad customer base. And like I said, I think far more people shop at Family Dollar than one would admit. Um, and I know, you know, I know quite a few people who, you know, have no family dollar signs in their yard that shop a family dollar, and that seems to be common because it's not, it's not the opposition to family dollar; it's more so the opposition to another one in the location that they've chosen, which is a, a one of the biggest pieces of of real estate in the immediate area. There are not pieces of property that big anymore, um, so you know they they. They've, they've chosen a very sensitive location, and obviously there's some very sensitive, um, you know, adjacent property owners and business owners. Um, and I think that little strip of Florida, you know, I, I, my house is two blocks, I own a house two blocks from that location uh, on Frierson. And I think a, a store there is just a poor choice. Um, you know, the way the, the property's laid out, it does. It's not very conducive to to freight deliveries, which um, nobody's really looked at the numbers. But I mean, I've watched almost on a daily basis at least one delivery to the Family Dollar over on Nebraska across from the Publix. One delivery a day, and knowing the traffic patterns on Florida Avenue, um, the trucks are supposed to be on the DOT roads. They're supposed to be on Florida Avenue. Well. I guarantee their deliveries are not going to always come on Ford Avenue. They're going to come up cross streets. That means they're going to come up wilder. They're going to come up higher, which are two residential streets that aren't even were never even constructed for that type of traffic. And you know, Ford Avenue is, is, is already a, a less than desirable place to walk on the sidewalk and ride a bike in traffic. Um, hopefully, that that will change. Um, but. Businesses like this, with the traffic patterns and the the activity that they have and the amount of deliveries that they get, that's not going to make it any better. Uh, it's going to it's definitely going to make it worse. And you know, to me, it's it's just something that there's a lot of little things that add up to to this particular location. The spokesperson for Family Dollar um, said yesterday when I spoke with him that um, they want to work with the community <clears throat> to make it more conducive for the area that it's in. And I asked, you know, okay, well, how can they, <clears throat> how can they work with you? What are you, what are you planning to do? Um, and right for right now, he said, you know, they're monitoring the Facebook page um, to see what people are saying and how they can react to it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that being the, the Facebook page of this, this group? Yeah, the group. So, I mean, what would you, what would you say to them? Because it's a done deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say to them to kind of maybe make the situation a little bit less um, bothersome for the community? Well, I mean, I, for Family Dollar, I really don't know that they have a. There are a lot of things that they can do. You know, they're. I, I don't foresee a company like Family Dollar. And I've been to three city council hearings where Family Dollar has been present. I was there for other reasons, but happened to sit through land development hearings, uh, zoning hearings for Family Dollar. The one that they're opening on Nebraska, the one that's over here on Hillsboro, and I can't remember the, the other one might have been the, the one on the one on Publix. And you know the way they approach doing business and, and pulling permits and their land development stuff is is all legit. It's all on the up and up and it's there's no there's no, um, there really aren't any any issues to, you know, there. But they, they're not going to share, you know, site plans with the community. They're not going to do it unless they have to, um, and they're not going to entertain just input where people want to give it. Um, it. It doesn't make sense. It's not cost effective. It would, it would just create. Okay. Um, it would just create more and more problems for them, and it would be never ending. So I don't really see how them saying, you know, we want to work with the community. You know, they don't they don't have any any strict code guidelines to dictate what the store needs to look like, and they're probably not going to entertain much there either. You know, if they were across the street, they'd have all these historic guidelines 
you know, if they, if the city would look at their their construction permitting and their planning and calculate it correctly, there would possibly be a requirement for them to, to do more in the way the building looks. Um, but they've carefully negotiated their improvements to the property so that it doesn't exceed half, 50% of the value of the property, which keeps them under some requirements for um, land development and, and, and zoning. Um, so I, I